Welcome back everybody. So today we got the LeBron 21. I am obviously very, very late with this one, but these were marked down to $80 on the Nike website, the US side. I'm not really sure about any of the other uh, Nike sites, but these, the LeBron 21s were marked down to $80. Obviously as of today, the Lakers season is over. LeBron's 21st season in the NBA is over, but the 21s obviously will continue on um, with other players wearing them in the NBA today as we continue throughout the playoffs. Um, but for, without further ado, let's get right into the review. Before we get into it, two things. If you can like and subscribe, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you want to leave a comment, it helps with the algorithm and obviously getting the video some more exposure, and I would be eternally grateful. Starting off with the packaging, obviously um, LeBrons tend to tell stories with the packaging. I have always enjoyed that aspect or element of the LeBron series and the 21s are no exception. Uh, so obviously you have a design motif of the oyster shell and obviously the shoe inside is representative of the pearl that oysters produce or some oysters produce. In this case, there's a lot of call-outs to the 21 or the 21st signature shoe. So you have LeBron signature on the top of the box, and then you have debossed dots around it. There's actually 21 dots around the signature, so 21st signature around the back of the shoe box. You have 21 hole punches, and it's Roman numeral 21 separated by a hyphen. Um, the box itself is uh, reminiscent or inspired by an oyster shell with the veins and all that fun stuff that are located on the shell itself. So overall, it's telling a great story. The inside of the box, again, is going along with that oyster aesthetic. So the inside of the box, the, even the tissue paper is reminiscent of the inside of an oyster shell that um, not in this case iridescent or pearlescent shine or um, sheen but it is reminiscent of the inside of an oyster shell. Um, this is the Akoya uh, launch colorway. I reviewed the Tahitian colorway, um, and we'll get a little bit further into that later on, but it also comes with a tech card. I always enjoy these because I would love to know what's inside the shoe, and this has the exploded view, which just gives you details about the shoe overall. And again, I really enjoy these. I know that they featured this on the 19s, the 20s, and now the 21s. It's always appreciated. It helps to kind of identify what is actually inside the shoe. Sometimes um, you don't know what's going on inside the shoe. They tell you, but this gives you the actual details. Now, when it comes to the design of the LeBron 21, um, you obviously have the 20, which is at this point the elephant in the room because it was a reimagining of the LeBron series. Um, it really just kind of reinvented what you think of a LeBron shoe to be. In the past, LeBron shoes were very big on protection and comfort and things like that. But what ended up happening, happening or a byproduct of that is really the shoe just became cumbersome to wear and just a bit too heavy. Um, and what you saw a lot of the time is LeBron would switch out from his mainline signature shoes into some of his takedown models. And presumably, it was probably because they were uncomfortable. Um, the LeBron 19, for me specifically, I reviewed it. I love the tech on it, but as I wore it more, I realized this is just an incredibly heavy shoe, a, a very cumbersome shoe to wear. So it came in weighing 23 and a half ounces for each shoe, and that is in a size 12. The LeBron 20 really, again, strips away all the unnecessary and keeps what's necessary, as I said in that video, and it gets it down to 15 ounces for a size 12, you know, 12 and a half. Now, the 21, kind of keeps that theme going of stripping away the unnecessary, adds a little bit of tech and adds a little bit of design uh, flair to it. And so what you have with the 21 is a design that is inspired by the pearl and obviously the shoe box being the uh, oyster shell. This particular colorway is called Tahitian and at first glance it looks like velvet, but as you get closer and you actually feel the material or feel the upper, you can see that pearlescent shine and you probably can get it on this video. I'll get it definitely on the B-roll, but this material is more of a plasticky uh, shroud over what's happening under the shoe, which is a lot of meshes, synthetics, and cables for stability and things like that. So this is more of the pretty upper, the you know, the dressing up the shoe, so to speak. Um, you have some of the design details coming back over from the LeBron 20, which is that double swoosh. And instead of that exaggerated, obvious double swoosh that was uh, stitched in, you have like a little bit of a Nike swoosh drop shadow behind that that is actually stitched into the upper. 
Um, on the back, you have another oyster uh, reference with the pearl being that Nike swoosh or the 21 Roman numeral. And then you have a back tab that if you flip up, says established in 1984, which is LeBron's year of birth. Another little fun Easter egg I found was uh, the ventilation holes. There's actually 23 ventilation holes signifying LeBron's jersey number 23. And then if you look on the other side, I believe there is 21 um, ventilation holes, obviously signifying the 21st signature shoe. And again, that number 21 is coming up on the shoe box and the shoes themselves in different forms. A couple other details that I really, really liked is they brought over this little lace lock or lace tab that was at the bottom of the LeBron 20. You have that perforated tongue that kind of keeps your foot from being pinched from your laces and cutting off uh, circulation and all that fun stuff. On the back of the tongue is a really cool uh, quilted texture, um, kind of what you see on the Amma Manier, uh line of shoes with the Jordan brand. And then on the insole, you have a hand, and I'll get this on B-roll, but you have a hand with four championship rings, obviously signifying LeBron's four championships. Moving on to the outsole, you have kind of a continuation of what we had on the LeBron 20, where there was a lot of storytelling elements. It looked like a map of Akron, and I believe they kind of continued that on the LeBron 21. So you have a traction pattern that is a storytelling pattern as well. Now, moving on to the materials of the shoe, um, on this particular colorway, there isn't technically anything in the way of materials that I would consider premium. Um, and that's not a bad thing. It really, like I said, for the Kyrie video, it really doesn't matter the materials on the upper as long as whatever materials they're using are utilized in the right way. So if you're using a lot of lightweight, cheaper materials, as long as your foot's locked down and the cushioning's there and all that fun stuff, then you should be okay. So materials don't necessarily make or break a shoe. What does kind of matter though is the materials that you use relative to the price point that you're putting these at. But in general, the materials that they use are good. Um, again, you have that sphere technology in the collar or sock liner area of the shoe, which is what was used in the 20. That quilted uh, padding on the back of the tongue. You have the perforations on the you know arch or instep of the shoe so that it kind of prevents your foot from getting pinched or anything like that. Overall materials are okay. Um, for this particular colorway, it's kind of hard to justify a $200 price point, but these were severely marked down on the Nike website at $80, so it made it an extremely easy buy and a low risk purchase for me. Now, just a few moments ago, I talked about weight and the LeBron 20 kind of stripping away the unnecessary. So again, the 19 came in at 23 and a half ounces roughly for a size 12. The 20 came in at about 15 ounces, and that was for a size 12, 12 and a half. I kind of went back and forth with the shoe. And then for the LeBron 21, we are coming in at a total of 16.2 ounces or 459 grams. Um, so it kind of increases the weight just a smidge, but it is for all intents and purposes, still a lightweight shoe that a lot of different positions would enjoy. Uh, me being a center type of uh, person or player, these were extremely comfortable. They were not cumbersome to wear or anything like that. On the court, they felt great and I didn't notice the weight whatsoever and um, I was very, very happy with that. Over on the fit and containment side, we talked about the shroud on the upper, but under the shroud, and what you can see kind of exposed on the laces is these little loops and they're kind of like cables for containment and they really do move. So if you actually mess around with them, they are active cables that if you tie your shoe tight enough, it will keep your foot contained. I will say without a doubt, especially with this little outrigger area, these shoes kept my foot on the uh, footbed because of those cables. When I was making cuts and all that fun stuff, I had no issues whatsoever. These shoes really do a great job of keeping your foot contained and keeping your foot on the footbed. Um, in terms of just how they fit in general, they fit really, really well. I decided to go with a 12 and a half. LeBrons tend to kind of go up and down in sizing. Some of the LeBrons can be a little bit tight if I go true to size. I went with the 12 and a half. I had a little bit of room in the toe box at the very end, but they fit overall really, really well. So if I'm making a recommendation in terms of sizing, if you like a tighter, you know, one-to-one -one fit, you may want to go true to size. If you like a little bit of room in the toe box, you may want to go up a half size. Now, the cushioning on the LeBron 21 was absolutely Fantastic. It's a great setup that they brought over from the LeBron 20. So you have an eight millimeter four foot turbo zoom, which is in this actual version of the LeBron. So the LeBron 21, 
The Zoom Turbo was a little bit more firm, so I think they filled the air of Zoom bags a little bit more, higher PSI, which creates a more firm ride. But again, that gives you more quirk feel um, and a less squishy ride. I think if it's too squishy, you exert more energy. And then in the heel zoom, 12 millimeters is the size of that bag. It's a bit beefy, but again, it's a little bit more firm. So you actually have a little bit more responsiveness in terms of bounce, but less squishiness that makes you exert more energy. Overall, the cushion setup was fantastic on the LeBron 21 where you actually are provided a lot of versatility. It, it is pretty much meant for any type of position, whether you're, you're a center or a point guard, shooting guard, whatever. Whatever your body type, this is gonna be the perfect shoe for you. Now, when it comes to the traction on the LeBron 21, it was similar to what the LeBron 20 started, which is it had the storytelling element of the map of Akron, Ohio. This seems to feature some type of a map. I'm not really sure of what, uh, but it does look to continue what the 20 started. And when you do dive into storytelling elements for a traction pattern, it could be hit or miss. And there are those times where it doesn't work and you really can't get any grip on the court. These fortunately gripped really, really well. Um, I never really had any issues with any slipping. Um, I never really had to actually clean the shoe. I was playing on a moderately clean court, but if you end up getting dust on the shoe, I don't think you're gonna really have any issues with um, dust buildup or anything like that. If you wipe the shoe, obviously you're gonna get that tackiness back, which is obviously preferable. But overall, um, traction was fantastic on the LeBron 21. Over on their pricing and recommendation side, um, the LeBron 21 started off at $200. And what I noticed is as more colorways dropped, I didn't see the sizes really flying off the shelf, so to speak, the digital shelf. Um, and so at $200, obviously it was a little bit too much of a price to pay for buyers and the way that buyers can kind of tell a brand that it's too much money or we don't want this shoe at this price is to not buy the shoe. Eventually, um, Nike reduced the price of the LeBron 21 uh, slowly and surely it kind of trickled to all the other colorways. And what you did see though, is a $200 shoe get marked down to 130, 140, and then eventually get marked down to 110, 115. And at that point, you're trying to figure out, should I pull the trigger? Um, and that was kind of what I was kind of debating on. I personally went with the $200 Akoya colorway, which was the launch colorway, featured that luxurious leather upper. It was a really nice colorway, very clean with orange hits and things like that. What I didn't expect though, was this shoe that was originally priced at $200 to get marked under $100 and more specifically $80 US. I was kind of like floored that they were that cheap, especially you know a $200 shoe getting marked down to $80. So again, obviously it was an easy purchase, it was a low risk purchase and it gave me the ability to review the shoe and again, be pleasantly surprised by the overall performance. Great traction, great cushioning, great fit and in my opinion, a great clean shoe. If you're wondering, should I buy the shoe, especially now if it's discounted? Absolutely, if you can kind of pull it off, buy multiple pairs, especially if it's at $80. I believe there are some discount codes right now. But overall, if you haven't been able to tell, I love the shoe, I highly recommend it. It's been a fun shoe to play in. Um, wearing it casually, I'm someone who still wears basketball shoes casually. I think it's a clean looking shoe to wear casually, but overall, it's a great performing shoe. Highly recommend it. That will just about wrap it up for this video. If there's anything I missed or anything you would like to know about the LeBron 21, please leave a comment. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a good day.